Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Eplash and today we are talking about the new Gaunt's Ghost Rules, their price, and a little bit about the new Cadian box with the upgrade sprues and their price. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving a thumbs up, subscribing, and checking the links down in the description below. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so first up, we are talking about Gaunt's Ghost and their price. It is confirmed that they will be costing $65 uh, or 55 euros which is more or less 45 to 42 pounds. And that's quite a lot for the number of models you're getting. Obviously, you're getting uh, Ibram Gaunt and five additional models. So, yeah. But it's not bad when it comes to price per point. And GW was always known to price their character models a little bit higher. And this is more or less a box full of characters. So, there is that. You're getting an HQ choice for 135 points and they will act as a single unit as far as I know. They will very likely be in the new guard codex. So a couple of additional information are that they can be included in a guard detachment or auxiliary support. They do not break regimental traits. So you can include them basically anywhere. And GW has stated that they have included their tenth rules, their stealthiness into their baseline. Uh, of rules and not just uh, forcing you to play them as a 10th regiment. So you have a lot of flexibility with these, uh, which is nice. Being able to include them in any guard regiment is really something we love to see. And it's also better for GW since it will sell more models. Not everyone has a 10th uh, army. So having this rule actually helps GW to sell and it also makes them more flexible. We are not sure yet if all the models will be characters. The article from Warhammer Community implies that, which would interact badly or uh, better with some specific secondary objectives. There is obviously a lookout, sir, which would help a lot of characters, but it would be bad for secondary objectives like assassinate. So as I already said, they have the tenth rules more or less baked in. They deploy anywhere nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone and models. So it's basically forward deployment or the same rule that infiltrators have from the space marines. They have tenth camo cloaks, so you can't shoot them from 18 inch or farther away at all, which makes them amazing backline objective folders or you place them on more or less desolate midfield objectives where they can really make use of this ability because this is probably their strongest ability. Not being able to be shot at above 18 inches at all is quite insane. Lastly, range attacks get minus one to hit even if your enemy gets below the 18 inch mark and you get an additional plus one to save from cover benefits. So that's quite a lot to make these units durable and guard units needed. So it's nice to see that your 135 points are not going unprotected. So you have a total of 17 wounds across six models, which is quite nice. They, they will stick around. You have to consider that each model brings their own special rules to the squad. So losing a single one of them will hurt but you will get your points worth for 135 points in my opinion. All right, next up, let's talk about the characters in specific. All of them have slightly different data sheets, so you need to keep an eye out on that, but all of them have a six inch movement and Ibram Gaunt happens to hit on twos, no matter if he's in midi or attacking with a ranged weapon. He has a chainsaw that grants him an additional D3 attacks, strength user, AP minus one and damage two, which is pretty decent. He will be able to dish out a lot of wounds if he happens to hit. Strength 3 obviously not the best, but damage 2 is actually pretty nice and AP-1 means that he is a real threat to intercessors and the likes. And he obviously as a commissar makes the squad fearless, which is nice, but nothing to write home about. Next up we have Colm Korbeck who has a hotshot last carbine with 24 inch range, uh, 3 attacks, strength 3 AP minus 3 damage 1, pretty decent, has only a 5 up armor save, Ibram Gaunt has a 4 up in case I didn't mention that. In each battle round you don't pay a CP or you get to pay minus 1 CP for a core stratagem for that unit in specific, not in general. So if you d use a command reroll or if you use a generic stratagem or one from the Astro Militarum book and it only costs 1 CP, 
you get potentially free uh, five free stratagems per turn off that are only applicable to the Gaunt's Ghost squad. So that's pretty good. I think that opens up a insane amount of possibilities when it comes to strategizing, to making them even tougher. Uh, I think command reroll is sort of a little bit wasted on them, but yeah, I really like the special rule. And Com Corbeck will be probably one of those characters you will have to part with last because that ability is really, really strong. And having him go first would be a mistake, in my opinion. All right, as a stark contrast to our Com Corbeck character, we have Alan Ron, who has a silver knife at AP minus one and damage one with three attacks. That's not very impressive. Uh, additionally, he has the special rule that one unit in engagement range fights last, which is useful and it improves survivability, but it's by far the weakest one out of the bunch, except for maybe one other character. So if you will be allocating wounds to the squad, Elimron will probably be the first one to take the hits. And I think it's fine to have a character to just, you know, have to take the hits first and die and... Uh, have the rest of your squad survive. I think that's a good thing to have in a squad. Next up, we have Lane Larkin, our sniper rifle guy, who has a 36-inch heavy one, strength 5, AP-2, damage, D3, sniper rifle, which is insane, with D3 mortal wounds on wound rolls of sixes. Wow, that's a lot. Um, Very good weapon. Uh, he has a ballistic skill of 2, which means even though he moves, because the sniper rifle is a heavy weapon, still hits on 3s, which is amazing, because the unit will either be moving a lot or not at all. So having that option to hit on 3s is very useful. And the ability that the entire unit ignores cover at range. Considering the ranged weapons we've seen so far with the Hotshot Last Carbine and the sniper rifle, this will be a very useful ability. And we have another character with a very good, or two characters with very good ranged weapons. So this ability all in all, I would value, you know, B tier in the middle. It's definitely useful. It's not the best one, but I, I think I see, see this triggering quite a bit. Do take note that Lane Larkin only has two wounds. Alan Ron had three wounds and Com Corbeck and Ibram Gond had four wounds. So the last two characters also have only two wounds. That's a big difference and makes Ellen Ron an even better first target. Next up, we have Try Again Bragg, who is carrying an auto cannon with no penalty to moving and shooting. And if he misses, he gets to shoot again. His ballistic skill is five up, so he will have to use that quite a bit. And... Try again, Bragg can literally try again until he hits at least one shot with his auto cannon. You have basically infinite rerolls on your hits until you hit at least once, which is actually very fun. It makes complete sense for the character, and you see it in the name. Probably narratively and lore wise, the coolest character and rules transition from, from the book and from the idea the character transmits to the actual rules in the game. I really like this character. Sad the only two wounds. I wish he had three because it would fit his massive statue. But um, yeah, a cool character. Auto cannons are no joke. And I think he will also die pretty late because just the power of the auto cannon and the ability to just always at least hit once. I do want to note that Try Again Bragg's special rule is very um, centered on himself, so he's not buffing the other units or models in the squad. So, yeah. But, as I said, Auto Cannon, Strength 7, AP-1, Damage 2 with 2 shots and 48-inch range is no joke. Lastly, we have Owen McCall, who is probably the third most important character in this squad. He has a last carbine with 24 inch range, assault 3, strength 3, AP 0 and damage 1. So basically the regular weapon just as an assault 3 weapon and he's hitting on 2s, which is very important to mention. Additionally, he has 4 attacks in melee, also hitting on 2s. So he is very versatile, very useful in each and every situation. Now his special rule grants the entire unit a 5 plus invulnerable save. And I don't have to explain why this is really good. So high AP fire will or has a chance to be ignored. 
a five up invulnerable safe i think has its place and i think it's very very strong especially for guardsmen or guardsmen uh type characters with toughness tree so yeah this one you will try to protect as best as you can all right so the conclusion of this squad would be that they are not particularly good in either melee or shooting they are okay at both but not excelling at any i do prefer them in range combat situations though but i think their most pronounced ability is to sit on an objective and be extremely annoying and surprisingly durable for a guard unit then there are some of the more popular stratagems like take cover i think because you can always get it for free because of the ability of one of your squad members i think this one will be the one you will be using the most just to add that touch more of survivability and because it technically gives you an insanely better armor save now are there other options to improve them obviously you can use hqs to have them reroll once to hit you can improve their invulnerable save to a four up with an astropath so there are ways to make them even more durable and even more annoying lastly i wanted to touch on the new imperial guard guardsman kit and this one will be priced at 45 dollars 29 pounds or 35 euros so that's a big step up from the current price so yeah it was more or less expected because there is an additional upgrade through in there but cadians and regular guardsmen are getting more and more expensive and i think the imperial guard is regarded as the most expensive faction to collect from scratch as far as i know so yeah the the day the imperial guard loses their cheap five-man model box for ten dollars will be the day that the imperial guard will be without equal the most expensive army to collect in the game so what do you get for your additional money you get 25 heads you get additional equipment plasma melter flamer power sword bolter and pistols and that's basically it it's just a little bit more variety a little bit updated heads because the heads are the thing that aged the worst i think the regular poses and the armor aged fine and yeah it's it's just sad to see the imperial guard get more and more expensive all right and that's the video i hope you enjoyed the video if you did consider clicking all the links and all the buttons below the video and i see you in the next one bye bye